All right, Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that is due to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors being to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Noise in the gospel abroad, living up the standard of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. It's the Aki Mahalaya, coming back with another lesson through the Spirit. Uh, Lord's will be edifying. Uh, this is what the elder apostle of Rhyme Lab had went into yesterday. Um, he did a lesson called uh, A Man Should Desire to Go Into the City and Should Not Be Able, which is based on the vote of martial law, according to the Bible, which the Bible clearly depicts a time of trouble beyond any human reasoning or fathoming. Okay, we know through the spirit that these hilarious times that we're going to enter into is going to be off the market, man. And they're already setting up for the second lockdown because this is an article here by Tyranny. This came out of August, not August. October the 15th and you got to pardon me I'm actually driving as well but uh it says I received this from an elected member of the Canadian government who was I guess the prime minister's office the PMO plans for the neighbors to the north it says this is a nightmare unfolding and Jacob's trouble the purge you know FEMA camps the UN all these proverbial incidents that's going to take place on the shores of America and preferably around the world which is preferred for the most high that it will happen um hey brothers man we're we're here you know you notice these demons are getting more stronger people are turning more to betrayal you know uh men that was once in the truth they're falling out left and right you know they're complacent they're doing things that's not convenient for the spirit especially of the newcomers out there that's sitting back and reeling all this stuff in, it's it's, pretty, it's, it's it's a big, it's a big, it's a big cesspool of wickedness, and this is going to be the remedy for all that. But it says here, I want to provide you some very important information. He says, I'm a committee member with the, within the Liberal Party of Canada. I sit within several community groups, uh, community groups. But the information I am providing is originated from the Strategic Planning Committee, which is strategized or steered by the PMO. Okay, politically, um, the PMO stands for the party, uh, uh, wait, the party, stayed by the PMO, wait a minute, uh, it's locking. anyway, like I said, I'm driving, but, um, it says I need to start off by saying that I am not happy doing this, but I have to, and as a Canadian, it says it is more important as a parent who wants a better future, not only for my children, but for other children as well, well, the future for America and Canada or these other nations, these other Edomite conglomerates, is destruction. It's judgment from on high. That's the future of this place. Nothing more, nothing less. That's the judgment for Babylon. It says, the other reason I'm doing this is because roughly 30% of the community members are not pleased with this direction this would take Canada. But our opinions have been ignored and they plan on moving forward with their goal. Right, because the new world order is set in stone with the most high. Okay, this is the most highest proverbial plan of, of, of tyranny on the earth so he can be justified on setting up this kingdom. That way we don't have to deal with all this, this wickedness. We don't have to deal with the evil shenanigans of this world. We don't have to deal with these evil people. We don't have to deal with Esau no more. So this is a beautiful time we're entering into. Yes, it's very frightening by far. It's very startling and frightening. But nonetheless, this is what has to happen. It says they have made it very clear that nothing will stop the planned outcomes. It says the roadmap and aim was set out by the PMO and as follows. It says phase and secondary lockdown restrictions. And we spoke on the second lockdown. We said after the first lockdown let up, the second lockdown is going to be the real thing. The first lockdown was to see how many people was going to comply with the madness of Esau's tyranny. All right. People have already bought it up. People were in masks. People are already talking about getting inoculated. People are doing it at home, schooling kids, they're schooling at home. They're doing all this sorts of, of, of stuff, man. They're doing a reset, you know? And it was a point of time that Trump wanted to send all the Jake kids back to school physically. Why sending the Edomite kids, leaving them home, the suburban kids? Why? So he could be justified on raising numbers and blaming the minority or quote unquote minority race as the primary problem for this pandemic. It says here, it says a rolling, it says on a rolling basis, starting with the major metropolitan areas first, 
which is the cities, and expand outward, which is the suburbs and your counties, your county roads, expected by November 2020. We got less than a week and a half or less than two weeks before the end of October, all right? We got roughly almost two weeks, matter of fact, a week and a half of that, because next Saturday is that day called Halloween, which marks the last day of October, which the first day, All Saints Day, will be November 1st, all right? So we're less than two weeks away from entering the month of November, which this year is totally flown by. It says, rush the acquisition for construction of isolated facilities across every province and territory, meaning that FEMA camps, meaning that certain businesses, whether it's Walmart, old department stores, which we know as box stores, these particular ones, well, what, they, what they're gonna do, they're gonna basically put these particular regimes out of operation and they're gonna set up their camps. Primary example, I've used the example several times, is this one Sam's Club by my old house. Basically, that's been there, let me see, I've been in Missouri six and a half years, almost seven years, something like that. I've moved in that particular area, I wanna say around 2013, into 2012, no, 2012, 2013. I moved out there from 2014. I wanna say by the mid to end 2013, it was a Sam's Club, but they closed it down. It went out of business. But that building and that parking lot and that structure is still intact. You know, it's still intact and it looks like they're upkeeping with the maintenance. All right, and when you try to park in the parking lot, they got these barricades out there so you don't, you know, trespass on a property. That shows me right there that they're gonna use that facility for something other than building up another business and term it. That's what it says, rush the isolation of facilities across every province and territory. Expected December 2020. It says, a daily new cases of COVID-19 will surge beyond the capacity of testing, including increased COVID-related deaths following the same growth curves expected by the end of November 2020. Even with the job I got now, I notice that now the deaths or the COVID cases are ramping up. But my thing is, if all these people are dying from COVID-19, where the funerals at, you know? You should be seeing funerals daily on every road. If you having 10,000 affected daily, at least out of 10,000 people, you should at least see 100 funerals a day, a week at least, all right? Because if the mortality rate is less than uh, 1%, still of 1,000%, a percent of that, you at least, you, you're easily seeing about 50 to 100 funerals a week if you do the math on that. I haven't seen a funeral. I've probably seen three funerals in eight months, all right? And I stay all back churches and cathedrals down the road so that's a bunch of bullshit man but this is part of the agenda of esau edom it says complete and total secondary lockdown much stricter than the first and second rolling phase meaning that this one they're gonna force inoculations on people trump said look we have a powerful force as to how we're gonna distribute this uh, particular product through the military all right second lockdown meaning travel restrictions uh, 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 different types of ID, meaning that checkpoint set up. You can't go from one province to the next. If you live in one particular county, you can't go over to the next county. Even if you, let's just say, if you are in Kansas City, Missouri, and then you have a suburb called Belton right across the street from Kansas City, guess what? That's considered different jurisdictions. They have a barricade there, and you can't even cross the street. So let's just say if you got a child that live across the street, you know, and and you stay on the other side of the street, you ain't gonna be able to go there and see your kid. Well, let's just say if your kid go to school or that's engaged in some field trip and all of a sudden they set up these particular parameters on the lockdowns and the stringent measures between this COVID testing, you ain't going to be able to get your kids back, man. So these are the things that we're warning you people about. We're telling you that this shit is going to happen, you know, but you people are sitting back playing freaking hunky dory waiting on a better day. It ain't going to happen, man. Your better days, a dog days of Babylon are far behind you. All right, and the evil days are right in front of you and even some beyond. Because it's just gonna get evil, it's gonna get worse. It's not gonna lighten up, all right? And even if they do attempt to curve the measures by seeming to light things up, scriptures say peace and safety and sudden destruction coming upon them like a woman in travail or a child. So hey brothers, man, we gotta gird up our seatbelts, man. We gotta, we gotta, we gonna be thrust into this. You gotta thrust yourself into this, man. You gotta combat this shit head on. And, and, and put on the arm of the most high, man, because we ain't gonna be able to avoid this, all right? 
yeah, the Lord is going to keep us out of the way. Ultimately, we're going to be safe. But nonetheless, man, this is going to be all around us because most brothers, they live in the cities. You know, most brothers stand in surrounding suburbs on the outside of the city, outskirts, where they live in the cities. That is what it is. So a lot of brothers are going to see this stuff face value. Some brothers may even have troops surrounding their house. And it's not uh, might, they will. You know, but it's up to the Lord if he's going to lift that standard, you know. But it says here. Uh, it says. Give me one second here. Let me, give me one second. One second. It's lock in. My bad. Anyway, I'm back so I can focus now. So, anyways, going back down, scrolling. I left off. The acquisition or acquisition of construction isolated facilities going into the internment camps, aka the FEMA camps. And it says here the complete and total secondary lockdown, much stricter than the first and second rolling phase, expected by December 20th, 2020, end of January 2021. So a new uh, wave of resurgence is coming to, 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 to the horizon of these cases. It says here. Reform and expansion of the unemployment program. This is where it gets interesting to be transitioned into the universal basic income program UBIP All right expected by QE 1 2021 so roughly That's January February March April Possibly the spring of next year is when we went into the four quarters of the year I believe they do it in three month increments, but it says reform and expansion unemployment program Which is possibly lead to the RFID chip everything coming under digital currency because um they was talking about a digital dollar wallet because the possibility of this particular virus being on cash, etc. Which, come on, man, really? That's the case. Why people ain't catching a flu for putting cash in their hands, you know? Which germs do spread, but, I mean, they, they're a little far-fetched with this. But we understand this is part of Satan's device. Anyway, so it says here, projected COVID-19 mutation and slash or co-infection with secondary virus referred to as COVID-21. All right, so show you this thing has a patent on it it has a, a hyphen number behind it leading to a third wave with much higher mortality rate and higher rate of infection expected by early february 2021 so this is roughly let's say november december january february roughly three and a half months all right because if you technically be honest we're technically we're already in the month of november all right if you want to be technically honest or technically we only have a week and a half of, of february i mean not february but uh october left all right so anyway, this is the book of our Psalms. Matter of fact, I'll bring this out again. I bought this out of my last lesson, but hey, this is spirit. This is the book of Psalms 140, and I'm going to start at verses 8. It says, Grant not, O Yahweh, the desires of the wicked. This is desire, the new world order, to lock everything back down. It says, Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. All right? So once again, referring back to my previous lesson, if E <laughs> totally was was able to get this new world order off the, off the ground hey this man would be proud you thought he was proud then you know you talking about moon landing proud this devil man hey if he if he can take down the most high himself man this devil hey his pride will go through the roof they'll blatantly just start out just killing jake on the spot which is going to lead to that anyway because we're coming into the time of great insurrection but nonetheless hey the most high is going to upset this whole ordeal so it's good news for us in the end but this is the book of Psalm 64 and 5. It says, They encourage themselves in an evil matter. And they commune of laying snares privately, and they say, Who shall see them? All right. This is the thing they're doing under the table. All right. Because they're not coming out in the news telling you, Well, look, we got internment camps. We're going to put you people and detain you and put chips in you and torture you to death. They ain't going to come out and say that on the news. So, therefore, they put it in these different clauses and they set up these different scenarios in order to get people to basically comply with their vote of madness. Because at the end of the day, this is all madness and it's tyranny. It's tyrannical. And it says, And they search out iniquity and they accomplish a diligent search. And both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. So they sat back and they conjured this thing. They thought about it. You know, they put certain plans. They put certain formulas to test. Like, you know, everybody says, it's not the fact that this man is smart. He goes by a particular formula. It's just like you can teach a dummy a formula on a math problem and he'll be able to solve the math problem because math is nothing but formula. So that's all it is, okay? And it says here, daily news of COVID-21, 
hospitalizations and COVID-19 and COVID-21 related deaths would exceed medical care facility capacity. Expect the QE to QE2 2021. So roughly January, February, March, April, May, June, by June and July. And we're just going off quarters because like I said earlier, quarters are counted in three month increments. It says enhanced lockdown restrictions. And it's so funny though, because this is gonna pretty much go through the whole year of 2021. Like they stated that this thing can last up a few years of that, you know, longer. Because technically, shit, man, it's gonna be almost a year that we've been technically in this pandemic. You know, like I believe it came to the states in February, March, or March or something like that. They start shutting things down. So roughly, we got uh, November, December, January, February, March, five months before it'd be a year's top that it hit the United States. But prior then, it was around the world. I believe like sometime in January. And I remember the lockdown came right after the Passover. So we'll see. But it says enhanced lockdown restrictions referred to as a third lockdown will be implemented. Full travel restrictions will be imposed, including in province and inner city. Inter city. <laughs> Meaning that, hey, your inner cities, your ghettos, you're coming into out of the cities, you're going to the county roads. These things are going to have military checkpoints set up. They're going to basically check you and see if you have the proper uh, uh, requirements or proper credentials in order to cross over to different cities. They're going to see you want to see your medical papers. They want to see if you got the ID. They want to see if you've been uh, inoculated. They want to see all these things before they allow you to travel. Checkpoints. And eventually it's going to get to the point that people are going to get so fed up with it that they're going to start taking matters in their own hands. And that's what they're banking on. And this is why they got these internment camps that they're getting ready to set up. Okay. And it says here. It says transitioning of individuals into the universal basic income program basically which is going to lead into the chip expect mid qe 2021 projected supply chain breakdowns inventory shortages large economic instability and by this time people are going to lost their damn minds man because they're going to be so used to being locked down to the point they're going to start going crazy i remember these people was locked down for two weeks back in march and they was losing their damn minds man but this is the whole new world order this is basically the time of jacob's trouble you know but uh anyway it says here uh, deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas, your cities, ghettos, as well as major roadways to establish travel checkpoints, restrict travel and movement, provide logistical support to an area expected by QE 2021. All right. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. There we go again. So hey, by next winter, it could be full fledged martial law here. Full fledged martial law. And that's one thing Yahweh Shah said himself. He says, pray that your flight be not a winner, nor on a Sabbath day. So what if Yahweh Shah was uh, hidden to something? What if he was trying to tell us something? Because this is the worst time to be drug out your house and thrown into a prison camp. <laughs> it's in the dead of winter. You know, especially when you say <laughs> you hate the winter. You know, and they can get real rigorous. They can put you out there with no clothes on and have you to sit on the ground <laughs> for hours. Feeding the cold, everything before they decide to put you in the blood. You're gonna be begging to go to them camps then, you know. But this is the book of Second Edges 15 and 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. It says, Here for that sword and their destruction draft nigh. One people should stand up to fight against another with swords in their hand, because all this is gonna lead up into a greater insurrection. You see this happening in a small scale in increments around the world now. Alright. And it says here. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh, one people should stand up to fight against one another with swords in their hand. For there should be sedition among men, invading one another, and they should not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their actions standing their power. So it's to the point that people ain't going to settle for being locked down. You know, they're not going to settle for being put on travel bans and being subjected to the houses or subjugated to the houses, you know, without food or water. People ain't going to go for it because remember the homeless populace is rising too. So what about these people? That's another threat you got to worry about. So it's going to be a big mess out here. But it says here, a man should desire to go into a city and should not be able. And this is what this is. Deployment of military personnel into major metropolitan areas as well as all major roadways to establish travel checkpoints. Restrict travel and, mutant and movement. Provided logistical support to the area, which means whatever they may need, inoculations or whatever they deem necessary to keep you people in check. All right. But it says, along with the provided roadmap, the Strategic Planning Committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor. 
okay meaning that economic collapse meaning they're gonna basically forgely collapse the economy and they're gonna collapse the global markets around the world because at the end of the day the dollar is reserve currency of all these particular uh, currencies these smaller currencies so what happens is the dollar goes down then the world's economies follow those of them that haven't succeeded from the dollar that's why you have what you call the Brexit nation because they are trying to succeed from the uh, reserve currency of the US uh, dollar but uh, it says along with the provided roadmap the strategic planning committee was asked to design an effective way of transitioning Canadians to meet an unprecedented economic endeavor it says here one that would change the face of Canada forever and alter the lives of Canadians right the RFID chip it says what we were told was that in that order to offset what was essentially an economic collapse on an international scale meaning worldwide that the federal government was going to offer Canadians total debt relief the reset the chip okay this is what we read about in a previous lesson that this is the the plan of the world's banks of the uh, what they call the Bank of not the Bank of England but the INF or the IMF the World Bank of England something that that guy mentioned in the last video I did but uh basically he was going into uh, how the Bank of London and how they already are prepared to implement these RFID chips so all these worlds or the westernized economies are getting ready to prep their people for mass chipping same thing what you see in Sweden now same thing is gonna happen in America and you people are sleepwalking right into this madness you know but it says this is how it works the federal government will offer to eliminate all personal debts mortgage loans credit cards which all funding will be provided to Canada by the IMF, which we know the IMF deals with the dollar, deals with the International Monetary Fund, the Federal Reserve, okay, which the elites own at this, the Rothschilds, the IMF under what will be known as the World Debt Reset Program. But in exchange for acceptance of this total debt forgiveness, the individual will forfeit ownership of any and all property and assets forever. So you got to ask yourself this, if you're going to do this, are you truly out of debt? Because why do I need to forfeit my home, my car? Why do I need to file a chapter 7 bankruptcy just for you to take anything anyway, just to be total debt free? You know, what point is that of, of having my assets taken away from me, but I'm debt free? So I can't enjoy the things I have? You know, that's ultimate slavery. So technically, you ain't debt free because they basically come in to capitalize on your, on your um, investments. So if you own a house, a vehicle, a business, and you win so many X of thousands and hundreds of dollars, thousands of debt, they come in to take that, but you're debt free. You see how evil this man is? All right. And this is why we tell you, man, that this man, he's a demon, man. All right. So it says, for because of the pride, the city should be troubled and the houses should be destroyed and men should be afraid. And the men should have no pity upon his neighbor, but should destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. So it's going to go up in smoke out here. You know, it's going to be bad. People looting, robbing, businesses being set on fire. That, that's just the beginning of what's going to come. Y'all ain't seen shit yet, you know? Because wait till they completely break everything down. And once the people realize they've been duped, all these people gonna lose it out here. And hey, we gonna be from the back, we're gonna be in the cut. Praising you how about Shimmy Hawa Shah. Because we know that this uh uh This is our time to get delivered up out of here. You know, so we embrace these things. We look forward to them happening. Alright? So this is the book of uh Matthews 24, and I'm gonna start it versus uh Let's start at 32. It says, Now learn the parable of the fig tree, when its branch is yet tender, and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So, all right, Yahweh Shai is giving you the signs what to look for. So, likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors, like the scriptures say, when you see these things come to pass, lift up thy head, thy that redemption draw nigh. All right, so we're going to be looking for the comment of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, and the miracles he's going to perform through certain men. All right, and it says, And verily I say unto you, this generation should not pass till all things be fulfilled. All right, so here we go, man. The Most High is getting ready to, to lay the smack down on this freaking place. And you people that's blind, you're not really on board with what's going on. Hey, you're going to be caught off guard by this. All right, and it's going to be a bad thing for you because you didn't take heed to the warning that the prophets was giving you. And we're talking about our people, you so-called Negro, Hispanic, and Native American, in possibly confusion to face Israelites out there that may resonate with the Spirit of the Lord. But anyway, it says here, in exchange for acceptance, this total debt forgiveness, the individual will forfeit any ownership of all property and assets forever, meaning that the government is going to take whatever you got. Matter of fact, I got another precept here. That's beautiful. Babakusha. Let me bring this out. 
uh, second address 16 bam because whatever you don't do they're going to take it from you by force anyway so this is second address 16 and I'm going to start at verses uh, 72 it says for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses <laughs> okay this is what this is talking about you're forfeiting but it's to the point they're going to physically cast you out of your house and put you in prison and it says the individual will also have to agree to partake in the COVID-19 and COVID-21 vaccination schedule, which will provide the individual with unrestricted travel and unrestricted living even under full lockdown, though he used a photo identification referred to as Canada's health pass. All right. So basically, you get their provisions, you able to move around. Same thing with the chip. You get the chip, they may be like, all right, well, you get out of prison for a little bit. But the destruction is coming. But committee members ask who will become the owner of the fortified property and assets in that scenario and what will happen to lenders or financial institutions we were simply told the world debt reset program will handle all of the details but several committees members also question what will happen to individuals if they refuse to participate in the world debt reset program or health pass or the vaccination schedule and the answer we got was very troubling i mean they're gonna kill you off they're going to take you to the detention, detention centers and you're going to disappear off the face of the earth. <laughs> All right, you're going to become, uh, you're going to basically become in, 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 invincible to the grid. All right, they're going to they're gonna remove your presence from this earth. All right, your spirit is going to be taken back to the spirit world. All right, you ain't going to exist no more. They're going to get rid of you, you know. So <laughs> play around with them if you want to. And this is for you. For you people out there, man, that think shit is a damn joke. See, we the men of the Lord. We know this is a dangerous game we're playing, but we signed up for it. So, hey, let's play it. But you people, <laughs> it'd be wise of you not to go against their orders because you have no protection. Unless you repent, you Israelites. But essentially, we were told it was our duty to make sure we come up with a plan to ensure that will never happen. And we were told it was the individual's best interest to participate. So the movie is starting to get good now. All right, we enter the, the climax you know, the end of the movie. But when several committee members, it says, when several committee members push relentlessly to get an answer, we were told that those who refuse will first live under the lockdown restrictions indefinitely. And after that, over a short period of time, it says, as more Canadians transition into the debt forgiveness program, the ones who refuse to participate will be deemed a public safety risk, meaning they can excommunicate you. All right, they can execute you. A terrorist, basically. And will be relocated into the isolation facilities, the death, the death camps. Once in those facilities, they will be given two options. Participate, and we said this, hey, you either take the chip and get out or you be put to death. It says once in those facilities, they will be given options. Participate in the debt forgiveness program and be released or stay indefinitely in the isolation facility under the classify of a serious public health risk and have all the SSCs. All right, if you a serious risk, man, they're going to be torturing your ass in there. So... As, so it says, so as you can imagine, after hearing all of this, it turned into quite the heated discussion and escalated beyond anything I've ever witnessed before. So a lot of people wasn't really with this stuff, man. You know, a lot of people wasn't really with it. But anyway, uh, let's get another precept here. Revelation. Because this is the future, baby. This is getting ready to go down, man. All right. And some brothers don't get caught up in this, but hey, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Those of us that end up getting caught. Lord's will, you know, hey, I'm not one of them, but hey, if it so happens to be, hey, the Lord give us a spirit of endurance. But it says, fear not those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, I will give thee a crown of life. Basically telling you you're going to FEMA camps. It's very well possible you can lose your life in there because you have felt, you, you, uh, you know, you stayed on point with the gospel. You held fast the gospel. You didn't buck up against... Uh, the most high's words, you know, you stay faithful, you know, ultimately they don't have no particular use for a person They can't rehabilitate or brainwash or indoctrinate. So therefore off you go But it says but so as you can I read that but in the end it was implied by the PMO That the whole agenda will move forward no matter who agrees with it or not I mean they coming down with great wrath Revelation 12 and 12 that it won't just be Canada but in fact, all nations will have similar roadmaps and agendas. Oh, shit. That we need to take advantage of the situations before uh, 
U.S. to promote or before us to promote change on a grander scale for the betterment of everyone. But the members who were opposed and the ones who brought up key issues that will arise from such thing were completely ignored. Our opinions and concerns were ignored. We were simply just told to do it. So basically, you get on board or you get the hell or you get out. You either with it or you ain't. It says, all I know is that I don't like this and I think it's going to place the Canadians into a dark future. And they got internment camps. This email communication... Uh, to me, from a verified member of the Canadian Parliament, very much fits with something that came out on October 8th via televised proceedings in the Parliament. It says, here's a member of Parliament asked that the people in Ontario should prepare for internment camps. And he was told yes, but in a vague and ambitious and ambiguous way. So let me play this real quick and, and see what he said. yesterday, I asked this government if the people of Ontario should prepare for internment camps. In September, the federal government posted a call for expressions of interest for contractors to supply, provide, and manage quarantine isolation camps throughout every province and every territory in Canada. These quarantine isolation camps, however, are not limited to people with COVID but provide a wide latitude for many people to be detained. Mm. Surely this government is aware of the intentions to build these isolation camps from coast to coast. And my question to the Premier is, how many of these camps will be built? And how many people does this government expect to do? Question. All right, for one thing, it ain't about them being built. They already built. They can use what they already got to bring in this. They ain't going to be building up new construction. You notice they're doing a lot of construction, but a lot of these are pre-existing facilities like baseball stadiums, football stadiums, box stores, apartment complexes, old abandoned factories, you know, things like that, you know. So it's already here. They already got the plan, underground facilities, stuff like that, all right? Government House Leader. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is very true that when people leave the country and when they come back in that the uh, uh, the province is suggesting and, uh, and the federal government, in cooperation with the federal go government, we are suggesting that people uh, isolate uh, themselves. That has been a, a practice that has been very successful not only here in the province of Ontario but across, uh, uh, across Canada. And we will, of course, be redoubling our efforts to make sure that uh, the people of the province of Ontario uh, remain safe, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. So if the member is referring to the fact that... Uh, uh, that one of the public health policies is that when you return from a jurisdiction outside of the province of Ontario or from another country that you isolate yourself for uh, for two weeks, I would suggest uh, uh, that that has been a good, uh, a good policy that's been working. In fact, this House has been doing the same thing since we came back. We are working in cohorts to make sure that the Legislative Assembly can continue to operate. That's why we have two separate cohorts. Uh, Mr. Speaker, response to cooperation of the official opposition. That is why all members of the independents have been excluded from that cohort because we want them to be able to participate in debate. So we will continue to do everything in our power to make sure that this house continues, but that the people of the province of Ontario and Canada are kept safe. Supplementary question. Again, uh, thanks to the Premier. Here's the RFP. And in the RFP, it uses clear language to express that these camps can be used for a broad spectrum of people, not limited to travelers. Indeed, it doesn't even mention international travelers it's just a broad latitude of people and i'll send over the copy of the rfp after so your government is must be in negotiations negotiations and aware of these plans to potentially detain and isolate citizens and residents mm. of our country and our province so speaker to the premier where will these camps be built how many people will be detained and for what reasons Questions. for what reasons can people be kept in these isolation camps and i'd like to i'd like to have the premier assure the people of a member take a seat the next question they basically told me shut the hell up all right, you see, they speak with a forked tongue, man. These men are wicked as hell. And they're coming. they coming. They're coming for you, your kids, your wives, your brothers, sisters. And that's all I got to say.
Last precept, Jeremiah 30 and 4, these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and Judah. Thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, fear not of peace. But ask ye now and see whether doth a man travail with child. And wherefore do I see every man with his hand on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces turned into paleness. All right. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he should be saved out of it. All right, so with that, I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to Yahweh by Shimei Shai. Double honors to the elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations unto the whole full act. And with that, Shalom and Ababa Ball.